Captain's Log, Stardate 302583.4. It's time to begin our look at Star Trek Online with the most logical place to start, a new character. Creating a character is probably the most fun thing to do in the game, and if they released a game that was just the character creator, I could spend hours playing it. Let's hope I don't do that here. Without further ado, let's create our character. I did a poll, and while it was a toss-up between Discovery, Romulan, and the original series, the original series won out, and I'm actually pretty happy because I haven't played the special TOS-era missions since they debuted in 2016. Now, usually I'd choose Alien so I get the best customization options and traits, but apparently Aliens didn't exist in the original series era, so we've got the choice of Human, Vulcan, Andorian, and Tellarite. Each race has their own innate traits, and because I've never played one before, I'm going to choose Andorian. I would have chosen Tellarite, which I've also never played before, but I feel like I'd just end up emulating Captain Tugs from the webcomic Attack Pattern Tugs, so Andorian it is. And as for the class, the poll came up with either Engineering, which is my usual go-to in Stowe, and Tactical, which I've played a bit of, but never as a character I regularly played. I'm going with Tactical because it means that there's a bit of a learning curve for me, and I don't want these videos to be easy. This is actually sort of interesting, because up until doing this, I hadn't realized just how much they'd changed the process since I made my Discovery Era character a year or two ago. Those preset options are new, although I don't think I'll be using them. For the uniform, I'm gonna start off with the classic original series look. Let's at least keep it consistent with the time period, eh? The only major difference is that I'm gonna make my uniform green to stand out. And as a reference to the Gold Key comics, I guess. Names are usually tough, but I've already got this one figured out. The name is actually a reference to my first ever Tactical Bridge Officer's default name from back when I demoed the game on my cousin's account right after launch, Talassa. I was initially going to go with a male Andorian and name him after my second bridge officer, but I decided to play around with the female avatar and ended up liking the options I got. Plus, I would like to keep my character list balanced, and I've got a lot of male characters already. And as for the name of the ship, I usually like to have a scheme. My original TOS characters' ships were all named after craters, my Discovery characters were all named after rovers, and for this one, mainly because of a recent episode of DC's Legends of Tomorrow, I'm going to be naming my ships after characters from the show, starting off with the USS Sharp. Sort of apropos when you realize that you get the bulk of your bridge officers while on this ship, and the ones that are mission rewards are basically carbon copy clones since everyone gets a set. I actually really like the original series Starfleet tutorial, mainly because it has a lot less of the contrivances that the current Starfleet tutorial has that really annoy me. I've been playing Stowe on and off basically since launch. I remember back when the game was pay to play, back when it was cryptic points instead of zen, and I remember the original Starfleet tutorial, which I honestly prefer to the current one. I mean, an ensign getting promoted straight to captain is a bit of a stretch, but at least we were already serving on the ship for an indeterminate amount of time before we were promoted. A just graduated cadet going straight to not only first officer on the training crews, but captain? Give me a break, I didn't like J.J. Abrams get away with that shit in Star Trek 2009, so I'm sure as hell not letting Star Trek Online get away with it now. The TOS tutorial is cut from more of the cloth of the original. We start out as an officer on the USS Sharp, traveling towards the planet Taurus 2, which if you're a fan of the original series, you'd remember as where the Galileo 7 episode took place. This time, we're actually heading there with Ensign Mears in tow as one of the survivors, seeking out a ship that went missing in the area and presumably crashed. Once we learn how to shoot a phaser, courtesy of Ensign Tarsi, we head down to the shuttle bay. Now, I do need to make a rather uncomfortable situation known. The original series tutorial, while I like it, has a very large elephant in the room. Namely, that your ship's original captain, Isaac Garrett, is voiced by Vic Mignona. And if you were on Twitter over the last few years, or are aware of voice actor drama, you'd know that there was certain allegations made against him, and you can look that up if you're interested in knowing the details, I don't have time to get into it here. But he's really only in the tutorial and two other missions, so we don't see that much of him, but I felt like I really had to bring it up just to warn people in case the voice might cause any issues. Anyway, back to the mission. 
After shuttling down, we land on the planet, and in keeping with genre conventions, we split up, with Mears going one way and Talassa and Tarsi going the other way with Ensign Flores. Once arriving near the crash site and saving one of the scientists, we're ambushed by the Torians and they kill Ensign Flores with a spear. Flores! Feels a lot like we could have saved him. I mean, Talassa took three spears right to the chest and it didn't even knock her down. Wait a minute, I think I figured out the problem. That's not Flores, that's his stunt double. No wonder he didn't survive. After fighting off the Torians, the game teaches the mechanics, which involve a lot of fetch quests and running. Ensign Mears finally shows up again, and we fight the Torians off once more. The Torians will be back, and in greater numbers. Alright, just remind me to go check on Uncle Owen and Aunt Peru when this is all over. Once we drive off the larger numbers by electrifying the wreckage, we perform a full assault on the Torian caves and senselessly massacre their leader. In fairness, they threw a spear through my chest, and that just royally annoyed me. Escaping the caves, we find another roadblock. Klingons. Why does it always have to be Klingons? Thankfully, they're far less intimidating than the Torians and go down easily. After uncovering a Klingon scheme to attack the Federation, we escape back to the shuttle and- Ah! Scroll! I'm no scientist, but I don't think we're supposed to have two Ensign Mirrors. I know this was a sequel to the Galileo 7, but I think it's also a sequel to The Enemy Within. How long until one of them shouts, I am Ensign Mirrors? Once we get back to the ship, we find it overrun with Klingons, which I think is a tad weird because I know how they boarded, but who opened the shuttle bay doors to let us back in? Or did they just beam in at the exact moment we returned? I know it's nitpicking, but I'm just trying to get a coherent timeline here. It's our job to repel the boarding parties, and after liberating the rest of the ship and justifying creating interior assets for the TOS era, and a bit of singing I'll take you home again Kathleen, we head into the ship combat tutorial. After getting up to the bridge, we see Ensign Hunter sitting in one of the stations. I don't know what it is about that guy, but I don't like him. He seems like a tool. The ship combat is a lot less story-heavy, so it's mostly amounts to Tarsi telling us how to fire phasers and torpedoes, and us wrecking a bunch of D5 Raptors. Soon we pick up a distress call, and because the USS Sharp is the only ship in range, owed to the fact that we're the only other operable Starfleet ship in the Murasaki Nebula, the others having crashed on the planet, we head off to save the ship, some random no-name ship named after a rental car company. After being thanked by Spock, the USS Sharp is called back to Earth's space dock for a debriefing, and we even get to schmooze with some of the Enterprise's senior staff, along with some reused voice clips for most of them, with McCoy and Scotty remarking that Talassa looks strangely familiar, even though they've never met before. Or have they? After talking with Ensign Mears, who's been reassigned to Earth since her previous deep space assignments didn't work out that well, we go for our debriefing and are told that not only is Captain Garrett being promoted, but we all go up in rank, since he's recommended that Talassa take his place on the Sharp. There's also a really weird bit where Spock walks in, and they MacGyver together an inspirational speech that uses the dialogue from the opening movie for the regular Starfleet faction, though I recognize that it being released a year after Leonard Nimoy passed away, they probably intended to either have recorded new audio, or wanted to keep Spock tied to it, though I can only imagine Talassa and Garrett turning to each other when Spock leaves, and mouthing, what the fuck? And with that, we're given a mission to explore the space dock. Don't get too attached to Tarsi or any other default bridge officer we might meet in the successive missions, though. I like to keep every playthrough fresh, so they're not long for this world. Unfortunately, I can't discharge Ensign Hunter. That tool. Since I'm Andorian, I figured I should be equal opportunity, so I've got a male Tellarite doctor, female Vulcan engineer, and a human tactical officer, which is good enough to start with, and it gets us some more abilities to use in the next few missions. Also, I should note that in their most recent sale, I shelled out for the lifetime subscription, which I've been on the fence about for years but so far I haven't regretted it, not that it amounts to much in the TOS era. I picked up my next mission, but we'll be talking about that one next time. 
Final thoughts for this mission are that, as I said at the beginning, it's one of my favorites, partly because I haven't played it as much and thus aren't sick to death of it, but also because it's pretty inventive and the way it ties the Enterprise in doesn't feel gratuitous, and having the tutorial be a sequel to a well-known TOS episode was a great way to reinforce that the faction debuted during the 50th anniversary of the original series. Plus, you get a great chance for a photo op with not only the Enterprise, but the entire Briggs staff, save for Kirk and Spock. Seeing as how this series owes its existence to that SF Debris parody I did for April Fool's Day a few years back, I'm going to borrow his rating system, and compared to the other Star Trek Online tutorials in the game, I give the TOS Faction tutorial an 8 out of 10. It's not perfect, and while recording footage for the game, there were some points that I felt the game shouldn't have dragged out, but there's an equal amount of cool stuff, like how it doesn't just tell you that plasma fire hurts you, it just lets you walk into the plasma fire until you get hurt, and then tells you what you have to do, which is rare. Usually games warn you before you burn yourself, and I think that is treating the player like like a human being who can learn, and not like an idiot. And like I said about the contrivances, to get your character into the captain's chair, apart from the Klingon and Romulan tutorials, I think this has the most solid and realistic command structure of the many tutorials in the game. Next time, we boldly go into a few more callbacks to the original series. See you next time. Thanks for watching, and if you enjoyed that video, be sure to hit that subscribe button to stay up to date on the channel. And if you'd like, you can also find my videos on any of these fine websites. And if you want to help out the channel, you can support us on Patreon. See you next time.